I am a philosopher of science and a philosopher of the mind. Uh, in this topic today, I'm going to discuss about um, quantum, um, well, not quantum theory, obviously, but um, time travel and the principles that have somehow been uh, missed out within the theoretical physics of time travel and um, the, the experimental physics within time travel, which has already been, you know, it's already been going ahead. Now, first of all, before we even um, begin to, um, to talk about time travel, we have to first of all understand certain concepts. Uh, for instance, what is time? You know, um, what is time? How do we know, uh, how do we, uh, in a sense, measure time? How do we say, yes, this time has happened, or uh, this is the measure of time? Like, for instance, a second. How do we measure a second? Yes, I know we do have clocks uh, and watches, but is that a real measure of time? Now, or is that a measure of intervals? How do they measure that? But anyway, that's completely a different uh, topic altogether. But when we look at things, uh, for instance, like time, we look at the uh, ancient times uh, when uh, farmers and uh, ancient uh, uh, civilizations used to measure time in the sense of seasons because they had to uh, realize which seasons are to plant, which seasons are to, uh, to, to harvest, and so forth and so forth, and when to do it. So they measured the seasons, you know, the winter, summer, uh, autumn, spring. Then um, it further on broke on down, and then now we've got today's watches. But when I look at time, let's say we had, didn't have these watches on us. And I look at time, and we didn't have the sun, we didn't have the, the earth rotating, for instance, and I'll say for now, the earth rotating around the sun. How do we measure time? Is it time between intervals? Like, for instance, I'm sitting here right now, like this, and I do that. Is that a measure of time? Because from the point of me doing, just sitting, to the point of me waving my hand, time has passed. Or, and that could be, I mean, for instance, that could be a measure of time. Or, is it when I'm constantly just sitting down and I've decided not to move my hand at a certain space of time, I've decided not to. Does it mean, I've decided to do nothing, does it mean time hasn't passed? Hmm. This thought of time makes you actually think about how complex it is. But there's a simple way I have come to understand what time is or the measurement of time uh, in a sense. Uh, for, um, but before I go on to my own explanation, some people have proposed that time is light. So the way light travels, um, is a measure of time between the amount of space that light covers is a measurement of time. Is it? How is that possible? In a vacuum, light moves at a constant speed, so that means uh, time is moving at a certain speed, I guess. But if, if light moves at a constant speed, isn't it possible that light can be slowed down? And what do I mean by light being slowed down? I mean, if you take, for instance, gravity in a vacuum, gravity will 
in slow light down. In fact, gravity, if light passes right into uh, a gravitational pull, for instance a black hole, it'll get stopped. Right? So, or it, it will not be able to escape. So it stops. That's it, it's been stopped. So, the measure of time using light isn't going to be that sufficient. Right? So, what is time? Um, and I think the best way I have understood what time is, and the best way for me to explain it, because I wouldn't want to be the person to say that, uh, that I wouldn't want to be the person to say that uh, time can be uh, like what I say is law because anyone who who says that um, I believe is very limited. I believe in me saying my understanding because my understanding has limitations like everyone else's. Um, to, and the limitations are to the information we have received, obviously. So, to my understanding, um, according to um, the Big Bang Theory, from the point of singularity, that's where I'll start off time being. At the point when time and space was non-existent, at the point of nothingness, and at the point of nothingness came about, and this is where things are a bit confusing and a bit hard to understand and no one can uh, up to today explain this um, principle at the point of singularity time and space was created okay so at this point of singularity there was a big explosion called the big bang people with the big bang theory right this big explosion that ended up creating all the universes, um, all the galaxies, all the stars, all the uh, planets, suns, me, you, everything, right? And with all this creation from a point of singularity, a time has been created. Now, how has time been created? Well, you have to understand that um, it is not necessarily time that has been created, but more, in a sense, the space in the universe has been, uh, has, which has always, the thing that it has always been there, this energy. So it's not me saying, um, uh, space with but it's this nothingness and out of this nothingness uh, in my understanding the universe has said what can you possibly be and in that sense it has tried to create everything possible within it within its understanding right and we'll call this uh, term universal consciousness which is universal understanding anyways so when we look at time for instance we have to understand that time is just a plane um, um, time is just the way consciousness has the ability to interact with energy that is what time is 